Good morning, happy new year. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today is the very first reading vlog of 2023. As always, I feel like the new year just absolutely crept up on us. Definitely does not feel like a new year, doesn't feel like January. I did take a little break from reading vlogs in November and December just because in November I was doing NaNoWriMo. I actually managed to finish it and I'm still working on that project. Um, I'm really proud of it, so that's good. And then in December, just spending time with family. So at January, I am back at the reading vlogs and very, very excited. I'm excited to kick off the new year with some good reads. New year, new me. I am up early before work. That's why the lighting's a little wonky because the sun hasn't risen yet. Um, and that's less of a new year, new me, more of I've just been having a little bit of trouble sleeping, but that's okay. We can pretend um, like I'm up early to be super productive or something like that. But my current reads right now, um, so since I didn't vlog at all in December, um, I didn't get to talk about my new like fixation on books, which is historical fiction in particular, the Cousins War and um, like the Tudor Plantagenet series from Philippa Gregory. I started it last month and I'm now on book six or seven, something like that. Currently reading Three Sisters, Three Queens, a uh, book like six or seven in this series. We're following Queen Margaret of Scotland. She's the older sister of Henry VIII. Um, and this is during the time of Catherine of Aragon. So like that reign in history, um, very, very exciting stuff. Uh, I know not everyone will think it's exciting. This series definitely um, hasn't gone through that much history even though we're on like book six or seven at this point. Um, what I find really fascinating is that it does go over, a lot of the books go over the same historical events but from very different sides of history um, which I find fascinating and have just been really enjoying and definitely have been really enjoying historical fiction and like the winter. It's just very cozy to me so I have been enjoying this. If you have any historical fiction recommendations um like older historical fiction um I'd say this is a pretty good sweet spot for me. Does not have to be in England at all. Yeah it's a genre that I'm getting more into. I definitely when I was a kid was obsessed with the Dear America books and like the Royals Dear Diaries series so um yeah I've been really enjoying this series. And then I've also been reading, this is a secondhand copy so you can't really tell what it is, but The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova and this is also, it also feels very historical fiction-y um even though it's historical fiction absolutely a little bit um historical horror fiction um because it is following some historians a father and a daughter there's two different timelines um and they're hunting down the origins of dracula who may or may not actually exist vampires may actually exist so i would definitely say this is for um not as magical but if you liked the academic writing style of Discovery of Witches um, and then also like the Da Vinci Code series um, with like the historians um, figuring out historical mysteries um, those would be good comp titles. I am enjoying it I will say it's it's very like dry like if you do not like wordy books if you don't like slow paced books if you don't like books that do a lot a lot of explanation and building up to like the actual story of I would say like this is um following two historians and they like to go into the back details and like her father is relaying his travels to his daughter for parts of this story um so just talking about like the historical features um even like historical context of like random buildings that they visit stuff like that um very meandering um so it's not like an action packed at least not at this point and i'm on like page 100 something 185 not action packed but there is some mystery going on some intrigue um so i would definitely say like a slower paced da vinci code with vampires. I'm really enjoying it. Definitely the type of vampire tome um, that I tend to enjoy. So those are like my top two reads right now. Of course I'm a mood reader so we'll see what else gets thrown in to this week. Um, but yeah it's the first week of the new year. Very excited to start off a new reading week. 
reading month, reading year. Um, yeah, very exciting, very exciting times, um, at least for me. He likes to plan everything out. He really enjoys a fresh start. Um, I'm not really one for resolutions so much. Um, just, I really like, you know, starting off a new planner um, and just starting off a new year. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this introductory clip. Gonna go um, finish getting ready for work and work some more, read some more, and I will update you all later. long time no update for this vlog because I might be finding myself um, edging very precariously close to a reading slump which I don't want. I don't want to start off my 2023 that way but um, first book that I finished this year was Three Sisters Three Queens by Philippa Gregory and that has been a series that has been just very consistently solid for me. None of them have been five stars but I haven't like hated any of them either. They've just been very enjoyable comfy reads for me to read in winter. I like historical fiction in the winter. Um, this was my least favorite one so far so that was a bit of a bummer. Um, it wasn't like a bad book, but it was definitely like my least favorite um, and my least favorite like protagonist to follow of the entire like nine book series so far. So that was unfortunate. Um, and then The Historian by Elizabeth Kostova, um, five out of five stars for like the concept. I adore the concept um, of finding out that Dracula may or may not be real and using your historian knowledge like as our protagonists do to hunt down the origins and hunt down him as well. Um, execution I'm not loving. I'm like 75% of the way through this um, and we are still researching um, and we haven't met Dracula yet, which makes me worry because this is a standalone and that this is probably going to be a very rushed ending because, um, yeah, there are like several objectives other than find Dracula in here, which would be a bit of a spoiler, um, but none of them have been resolved yet. And so I'm just worried that like the last 150 pages of this is gonna be kind of rushed. Um, definitely not what I was hoping that it was going to be, unfortunately. Um, it, it, it feels very dated. I think this came out in like the year 2000. So yeah, it came out in 2005. So there's that. And then the two different um, points of view, one of them is in the 1950s, I believe. There's another one that's in like the 1920s or 30s. Um, and then there's another one that's present day, but I want to say it's like 80s because 
um, it starts off with one of our main characters looking back on her girlhood and that's like the most recent series of events that we follow so that also may contribute to it feeling very very dated because we're in the past and honestly I don't know if it's because um, you know we're trying to stick very close to historical accuracy um, but the the main male protagonist in here oh um i i would have guessed this book was written by a man <laughs> with the way he describes every single woman the main male character describes every single woman like based on attractiveness based on how ethnic they are because it's a british man and american man depending on which point of view you're following um traveling through eastern europe and then also um, if they're older than him, how he wishes he would have met them in their prime. Um, just like, it's bizarre. Bizarre writing. Every single woman character. Um, there's like a lot of internalized misogyny in here. Um, and I just, I don't know if that's like a choice of the author. Um, to like make it accurate because obviously, you know, a man probably in the 1920s would not be the most politically correct, right? Um, we can assume that a white man would not um, be <laughs> the most up-to-date, you know, in 2023 um, terms of thinking or even speech or just interacting with women. Um, but at the same time, it's like so constant and it's through all three of the major plots that we're following and timelines that we're following that I just, I don't know. I don't know if it's a really good character choice on behalf of the author to make her characters feel this way, but her main female character who's in the 80s also kind of feels this way and talks about people this way. So I don't, I don't know. It's not my favorite writing style, which is a bummer because I really thought that this would be potentially like a favorite read of the year. Um, just the concept was amazing to me. So I am gonna finish it. I'm a little bummed about it. Also in all three of the plot lines in here, um, there's a romance that I hate. So um, yeah, I, there's a lot of things I don't like. I am gonna power through and finish it. And then um, yeah, we're not gonna talk about it anymore because it's a disappointment and I hate that because I really did think based on the premise, I love vampires, I love like historical mysteries um, that I would have liked it a whole lot more. So we are switching gears today. Um, while I'm finishing this, I am going to pick up something else. It's another anticipated read um, and this one is very short. So I'm hoping, you know, to get in like a short read, an interesting read, very different than what I've been reading, which has been very historically based. So I'm picking up briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. Don't know anything about this, except I believe it's sapphic. I believe it's kind of like speculative, potentially more literary horror. I'm not sure going into this very blind, but I generally tend to love covers that look like this. Um, Woman Eating by Claire Cotto is one of my favorite books of last year. Just like the trend of speculative or horror fiction using like a painting, a portrait for the cover. I've very much been enjoying books like that. So I know don't judge a book by its cover. That's what I'm doing. I'm hoping to kind of switch things up and hopefully enjoy this read a little bit more than the stuff that I've been reading lately. So yes, so we're gonna read Briefly A Delicious Life, finish up The Historian, and I will talk to you all later.
So it is now Wednesday the 11th. We are making this a two week vlog just because last reading week did not go the way that I wanted it to go. Um, and I kind of took a little bit of a break to really make sure that I didn't fall into a reading slump, which really thanks to two books, I'm not in one. So the first one I did talk about briefly earlier, um, and that was briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. And I really enjoyed this one. I had no idea what I was getting into. I would say it's literary, historical. I had heard it that it might be literary horror. I wouldn't go into it expecting horror. Definitely literary, historical, queer fiction. This one's very short. I don't want to give too much away, but I will read the blurb that immediately drew me into the book. Um, and so that was, when I was alive, I lived in a time of beautiful men. After I died, I found myself in a time of beautiful women. So this is following a young girl who dies a very long time ago, finds herself haunting the location that she died. Um, so essentially she's a ghost. It's a little bit different. There are some things that she can do um, that are very interesting for ghost lore for me, but she essentially just watches. Um, it's this monastery just through time. People of the monastery, of the surrounding village come and go. And just her observations about life and all of these life experiences that she never got to experience when she was alive because she died when she's like 13, 14. So briefly, she, she's alive for a very brief moment in time. And so just in her afterlife, being so much longer than her original life, um, just experiencing all of these wonderful, beautiful moments, these small moments that make life worth living, the ones that we usually take for granted, like how delicious ripe fruit tastes, how nice the sun feels on your skin, how someone you love looks at you when you're not looking. Um, just like very small, little things just exploring the beauty in that very short I was very not entertained it's a very solemn little book but a very beautiful little book and I really enjoyed it so um, I would almost say like the lovely bones sort of wistfulness about being alive definitely a very different tone and story than the lovely bones but that essential like wistfulness about someone who dies very tragically young um, and then is re-experiencing life through watching other people live on beyond them. Um, that's very much at the core of the story and I thought it was very beautiful. And then the thing that is really single-handedly saving my reading experience for this week is Hellbent by Lee Bardugo. It came out on Tuesday and I have my audiobook via Libro FM. I do not have my Barnes & Noble exclusive edition yet. That's coming in the mail soon but I am about 30% of the way through it and I'm absolutely loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I loved Ninth House. I will say it's everything that I wanted the sequel to Ninth House to be, but it goes in a completely different direction than I was anticipating it going simultaneously. It's great. Um, so yeah, just a short and sweet little update there. Um, I don't know what else I'm going to pick up because I have a feeling I'm absolutely going to just fly through Hellbent. But thankfully having like a lackluster first week of reading of 2023, this week's turning out to be a little bit better. I'm just, I'm absolutely loving Hellbent. Um, and I'm very excited because it's always such a great feeling when a book you've been anticipating for literal years is living up to your expectations. So yeah, just a short little update because this is going to be a two week long vlog now because I was compiling footage and realized number one, it was very short, um, which wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker for a vlog for me. But number two, I didn't like anything that I read pretty much. I mean, I enjoyed things okay, but just like felt very meh and ambivalent about it all. So um, kind of wanted to throw some better <laughs> book reviews into this vlog because personally, I don't have fun reading things and then talking about things that, um, not even that I hated, but just things that I felt just very bland about. Briefly, A Delicious Life, really enjoyed it. It was very short. Um, I very much, very much enjoyed it. Definitely a wistful, kind of spooky adjacent because our main character is a ghost, but it's not terrifying or scary. Definitely a lyrical literary book that just makes you appreciate little things after reading it. And yeah, I'm gonna go read some more Hellbent and I will talk to y'all later. So this 
vlog has been about three weeks in the making um, and it's time to wrap it up. Luckily I'm ending on a really good note. I feel like compared to some of the books earlier, I don't know why I keep bringing it up. I mean none of them were like one star reads or tablet reads, just not um, things that really motivated me to read more as well as I've also just really been kind of January is not usually like the greatest for me in terms of my mental health. Unfortunately, I thought it was going to be better. It's still not better. So I've been dealing with that and just trying to take things slowly, just really relax. And also, I've been playing a ton of Pokemon Scarlet. Um, I've just been very obsessed with that game. I know there are some like technical little glitches, some graphics glitches, um, but honestly, I love it. I love it so much. It's just so much fun to play and just like the open world you can really relax and just dive into it and get lost in it. So I've been playing that a lot but I do have a five star book and probably honestly one of my favorite books of 2023 to end this vlog off with. And that would be no surprises for me Hellbent by Leigh Bardugo and honestly I think this one is it doesn't fall victim to the second book symptom but it's like better than the first. I love the first, don't get me wrong. Um, I've reread it multiple times now and I just absolutely love Ninth House. This one, oh my god, it just, it's just so, it's great. Um, and I feel like the first book, you do like the characters, at least for me, but they're unlikable characters. Um, at least I think so, the majority of them. This one, you really dive into a whole bunch of different characters and really get to know them more personally. And just by the end of this book, you would go to hell. <laughs> you go to hell and back to fight for any one of these characters, any one of our main characters, um, even some that you totally would not expect. There's a character that was in book one that I just like was so secondary that I didn't care about, didn't think they would be in this one as much, and like they're one of my favorites, honestly. Um, all I'll say, and it's not Darlington, it's it's a character that completely comes out of left field, um, but by the end of this, like he is a himbo and I will protect him with my life. The lore expands, um, the stakes expand, just I, I absolutely loved it, and I think I do honestly think if you didn't like the first one, um, you're probably not going to like this one because this one feels very unapologetically um, just like the first. And I was a little bit worried that because this took so much time, because I felt like Ninth House got such weird mixed reviews and some of those reviews I felt like were basing it on the fact that it wasn't YA and um, just like some critiques of content that I don't think number one male authors get as much flack for and number two um, why are we gatekeeping authors like from telling their personal experiences like exploring that through art yes there are some dark things that happen in this series but those things unfortunately happen in real life um, I believe some of them have happened to Leigh Dugo and I do think it's really disgusting much like forced outing kind of tying it into Heartstopper and that poor kid that had to come out before he was ready because people didn't think he was gay enough to play the role like I don't think we should have to force authors or force actors to like give us all of their trauma and like forcibly like give that to us before we are ready in terms of declaring that we only want own voices stories if that makes sense i totally think own voices stories matters um as a queer person you can usually tell when things are own voices or not um probably i would assume <laughs> that is the way for a lot of other things um as well like own voices is important and it matters but i think that we are going to miss out on a lot of really wonderful storytelling um, because we're demanding authors to give us their trauma. I'm thinking the same thing happened to, I believe, the Gideon the Ninth writer. Um, and I forget their name, but uh, so yeah, um, I was pleasantly surprised, not pleasantly surprised, like Leigh Bardugo can write whatever she wants. She could have totally made this like fluffy and light and not dark at all if she had wanted to. I still probably would have eaten it up with a spoon, but I did really enjoy it. This was just as unapologetically dark. The characters are so dark, so flawed, sometimes make like god awful decisions. Um, but like that's the only decision that they could make um, to survive. Alex Stern is a fighter. Her friends are fighters. They're survivors. Um, 
And there are some dark things in this book. And I would say if you're worried about that, if you're reading the first book and thought it was too dark, the same kind of themes exploring like a character's backstories. And there's this one part where if you know the first book and you know what's kind of happening in this one. So to get to that location in this one, um, four different characters, we dive into their psyches and their tragic and just really horrible pasts. Um, and so there is a lot of trauma there. Storygraph's really good for looking up specific triggers and like how in detail they are so I would suggest that but um this was just like also the pacing I loved I just can't speak enough good things about this book it's it's just weird and dark and paranormal and graphic and gory and the characters are so unlikable but I love them all so much um I hope this isn't a duology I didn't even check I'm gonna assume that it's not because the ending it ends the story it also opens more stuff up so I am feeling like there's gonna be a book three. Oh, I hope so I hope it's not as big of a wait as this one was but I mean Leigh Bardugo is a very busy woman so you know I just I loved it I'm probably gonna reread this one this year um, in October because I just it was fantastic so that's going to be it for this vlog. Um, it's been a long time coming. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Um, we're we're gonna make 2023 our year. For me, it's definitely going to be the year of prioritizing my rest, my relaxation, my mental health, and just learning to take things slowly and relax and enjoy the little things. So yeah thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed it please be sure to give it a thumbs up subscribe to my channel for more content from me stay safe stay spooky and i'll see y'all in the next one bye